Hi, this is Prasanna from Drona Aviation. This is the second video of our series Drone Programming using Cygnus IDE. In this video, we try to understand the structure of our firmware. So, let's begin. In the previous video, we talked about how to install the Cygnus IDE and running a small test project so that we can get started. In case you've missed the video, you can find the link on the video right now. In order to start programming, it's essential for us to understand the structure of the firmware so that we can make most out of it. So let's begin by starting a new project in our Cygnus IDE. When you open up a new project, we see that we get this file called plutopilot.cpp file. Now this file by itself is not the firmware. This is the file which the user has access to to edit or add his code. It's interesting to realize that firmware is not what you write just here. This CPP file is compiled with a library file. You can find this library file on the left hand side menu. This library file is called libpluto. Libpluto and plutopilot.cpp together form the firmware and is deployed on the drone. Let's try to understand this a little bit more by digging a little bit more deeper. Now, as I told you that plutopilot.cpp just by itself does not form the firmware. This diagram shows how plutopilot.cpp and libpluto actually interact. Now, libpluto is a pre-compiled library which is primarily responsible for the stabilization and control of the drone. The user has access to all of this library using APIs. Now, there are five major parts of this library. Let's look at them one by one. Sensors. This particular block in the firmware is responsible for gathering all the raw data from the drone. In Pluto drones, there are four sensors. Accelerometer, magnetometer, barometer, and a gyroscope. All of those sensors help in stabilizing the drone in a good way. If for some reason, the user needs to access the accelerometer raw values, he can do that by accessing the sensor block. If you want to access the sensor block, you have to use hash include sensor.h and use the relevant APIs to access the relevant sensors. After the firmware has gathered raw sensor data, we move on to the next block, which is called the estimate block. This block is responsible for processing all the raw data from sensors and convert it to some meaningful values. For example, angles. Angles are values which are created using accelerometer data and gyroscope data using something called a complementary filter. All of such various algorithms to give us some meaningful data is done inside the estimate block. If we want to access some meaningful values, we can use hash include estimate.h and access the relevant states as they are called using the relevant APIs. Now we have got a reasonable estimates of some meaningful values or states as we call it in the estimate block. The next thing that the drone requires is the user command. Now we can have a look at the user block. User block is responsible for commanding what exactly the user wants. For example, what angle does the drone move at? or which mode the drone operates into. All of those commands are actually fulfilled by the user block. If you want to access any of those commands, we can use hash include user.h in plutopilot file and use the relevant APIs to command the drone the way we seem fit. Now we have a reasonable estimate of what the drone is doing and we also have the commands that the user wants. Using those two modules, the next block is driven. The next block is called the control block. Now this is the most important block in the firmware. This is responsible for all the stabilization of the drone. This block has many PIDs inside it. Using the estimate block and the user block, this block determines using PID algorithms what are the necessary output that the motor should be driven to achieve the desired user command. If you want to access the control block, we can use hash include control.h inside the plutopilot.cpp file to access all the various control functions. 
Now this is in general the flow of the firmware. Other than this, there are other tools available in the Pluto firmware. For example, graphs or print. Those tools are available inside the utils block. There are a few more tools available inside this block. You can check the API reference manual to check what are the various functions that each of those blocks have in order to understand various functionalities that the firmware gives access to. Now all of these blocks that we saw are available in Pluto 1.2 as well as Pluto X. Pluto X has some additional features which are given in the block here below. For now, we are not going to get into that. I hope you have learned something of value from this video. In the next video, we begin programming with the Cygnus IDE using some very simple examples and we try to understand the various loops which are used in order to control the Pluto drone. If you have any doubts, please write down in the comment section below and we'll make sure that you get the answers as soon as possible. Please like, share and subscribe to the video and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss the future video. And till that time, stay tuned. Thank you.